In this video, we're going to go ahead and get ourselves set up to A. When we show our menu, we want to disable mouse click through, so that way we can click. Uh, we don't actually click through the menu, instead we can interact with our GUI. And when we hide the menu, we want to enable mouse click through, so that way we can click through it, center, action, stuff like that, right to the game. Then we want to import our memory class, set it to only show the menu when our local player is valid, and after that, we will get into some fun stuff. So I already have the world of screen function set up. The This is just for well, the DirectX world of screen. The only difference is let me, that guy. We also call a convert to range function, which I had to add this in order to get it to draw right. Because the uh, we're pretty much going to be drawing between negative one and positive one for the X and Y values. And what this gets returned, it's not in that range, so it kind of, uh, like if you're drawing an ESP box or snap lines, it's not even remotely close to where it needs to be. So this fixes that and allows us to still use the normal world of screen function, just like normal. So this is only slightly modified. I got rid of the Z axis and that kind of stuff. Everything else is, it's the same. So that's gotten, this was uh, from guided hacking. So yeah, let's go ahead and begin. So first things first, disable mouse click through when we show the window. So when we call show menu, we want to disable mouse click through. So what we're going to do is glfw set windows attribute to the window we passed in, glfw mouse pass through false because we want it to be we want our mouse inputs to go to the menu. And then for hide menu, we do the same thing if we pass in true. So let's give that a try. I'm currently clicking, nothing happens. I press insert. I'm good to go. All my actions go to the game. Press insert again. Nothing happens. I can't move or anything like that. So that is done. So these two are done. Now we need to import the memory class, which can be downloaded from the description. So we have memmam.cpp and .h. Let's go ahead and add those to the project. I create a, I'll just drag it inside of include. Let's do memman. And I'm going to be lazy. I'm just going to put the CPP and the header in there. It's not really any, doesn't matter much. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add a new filter, call it man man. Inside of there, add existing items, include man man, and use both. So here's the header and the .cpp. Very straightforward to use. Uh, so after our menu gets created, go through here we set our boolean for menu visible. I want to go ahead and set everything up here. So pretty much before we actually start rendering, I want to set everything up so that way we can get the information that we need, such as our local player, which is what we're doing right here. So let's actually include memman first. Actually really clean this up. What are you complaining about? Yeah, doesn't matter. Let's so uh, leave that there and we're just going to separate We're just going to separate these two sections. So we're going to do include memman, memman.h. Right back here, memman. We're not going to be passing it around, so we don't not going to bother making it a pointer. Let's do a mem. So mem dot, we have get process. And this is going to be our game. So csgo.exe. So csgo.exe. You'll see it's going to complain. We need to make it a string literal. We can do that by just adding a capital L before our string. And this returns a uint pointer t. So uint pointer t. Let's do a proc ID. Then we need to get the uh, module. So mem dot get module. This one is, it's just client .exe. 
What's the other one? Oh, right. Uh, first parameter is proc ID. And then this returns you and pointer T. Uh, client equals blah, 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 get module. Then we can do a check. So if client, we're going to print out a log. So C out found client. Let's make sure we do. Okay. So I'm pretty sure it's client. It might be client panorama. I can't quite remember. So I'm going to go check real quick. Okay, I'm going to edit it. It's client.dll, not exe. Not sure why I went with that route. Now we test it. Found client, so we are good to go. Now I want to do a check, so I want to get my local player. So... Go into uint pointer t local player. And I want to do a do while. So do while. And what the condition is going to be local player equals null. So we want to use read process memory to try to get the local player. So we don't have any offsets or anything like that. So what we need to do is we need to include the, uh, what's it called, haze dumper offset list. So I have that actually just updated in another project. This will, so pretty much the way you would go about finding this is you would go open up Google, search for haze dumper, you'll see the GitHub, and you will see csgo.hpp, and this contains a list of the most recent off, well, within a couple recent versions, the most recent offsets. Uh, this should still be fine it's two days ago. Then again, when you're watching this, there's probably going to be an update. But you would download csgo.hpp or copy and paste it, whatever. Or you can run it yourself, which I've already done. So let me go ahead and grab mine because I know it's up to date. And we're just going to paste it in. So csgo.hpp. Let's go ahead and include that in our headers. So existing item, csgo.hpp. Let's include it. And if you, we open it up, you will see it's using namespace. So I don't feel like typing out, you know, just to use something. I don't want to do haze dumper, netvars, then blah, 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 blah. Instead, I'm just going to do using namespace, haze dumper, netvars, and same thing, using namespace, haze dumper, signatures. Actually, what's in signatures? Eh, I don't, yeah, we're going to be using some of those. Eh, I don't know what we're going to end up using out of that, if anything, but just so we don't have to type it in each time. Saves a lot of annoyance back down we want to go ahead and get our local player so local player equals mem dot read mem it's a template so the type we need is u int pointer t then the address is going to be client plus let's see something what is the local player just because i can't quite remember it i think it's signatures Okay, it's DW local player. So DW local player. And that should give us our local player. So if a menu pops up, that means we have our local player. Which it did. So we have our menu here, which means our local player was found. So what our local player is, it's... You see the guy I'm controlling? That's our local player. So it's pretty much the base address for our entity. So if you watch any of my unrelated tutorials and you watch me create a character or something like that, that's your local player, the player you control. And whenever I refer to entity, uh, most there's a lot of entities that can you know be found. But what I'm mostly going to be referring to when I say entity is this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, and all the enemies. So any other character that's not ourselves is what I'm referring to as an entity. 
just because the timer's about to run out. Okay, so we have our local player set. And that is all done. I want to go ahead and bring over our world screen and the convert to range function. So I'm going to move that into helpers. And I'm just going to copy and paste. Okay. So we obviously need to create some types. So we need a vec3 and a vec2. So a vec, what these vectors are, they're pretty much just uh, structs for floats. So a vec2 is a two-dimensional. So we're going to have a float x and a float y. A vec3 is three-dimensional. We're going to have a float x, float y, and a float z. And that's going to fix these issues here. So I'm going to create a new header. Uh, let's call it data types. And create it. So struct vec2, float x, float y, vec3, and add a float z. Or we can actually shorten this up if we really wanted to. X, Y, Z, same thing. I don't like doing that, it looks ugly. But now in our helpers.h, let's go ahead and include it. So include data types.h. And there we go. We have our convert to range, which it does not know exists. Because if you remember from any of my CS101 tutorials, assuming you even watched any, it reads from top to bottom. So when it's convert to range was below word screen, word screen had no idea what it was. But now that it's already ran convert to range, it's going to know what it is below. So now we have our word to screen function and our convert to range. And these will be copied in the, well, these will actually be uh, in the description as well. So you can just copy and paste because I know no one likes typing these days. They just want to copy and yeah. Well, especially in the world of cheating, they just paste everything. Then again, that's kind of what I'm doing here, minus the small changes. Okay, so that is, yeah, that is everything we are set to do for this video. So, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think. I think for the next video, I'm going to go ahead and actually get rid of that. I want to make sure client's valid first. So if client equals null, we're just going to return. Oh, return zero. Uh, proc ID is kind of the same deal. And I'm just going to leave it as is. So if proc ID is null, we return. If client if client's null, we return. Then we constantly loop to get our local player. So for example, if we load this up at the main menu, uh, it's going to keep searching and searching and searching until we end up in a match like this, in which case this is not this is going to be false. So we're going to have a valid local player. And we're going to go ahead and render our menu to do whatever you know we need. So in the next video, uh, we're going to loop through the entity list. Uh, we're going to get the positions. We're going to get our view matrix and store that. I'm trying to think of any... Eh, I'll figure it out when we actually get to the next video. So, anyways, this one's done. I will see you in the next one. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description where I create a Team Deathmatch series that you can follow along with just for patrons and Unreal Engine and C++. If you have any questions or anything like that and you just don't know where to ask, you can find a link to my Discord down there as well, and I'll try to help you out the best I can. So, take care.